Thank you, Gretchen. Good morning. And I welcome you all to worship this morning here at United Lutheran Church. Welcome to those who are guests today in worship. Welcome to those who join us through our radio broadcast each week and those who are joining us through Facebook Live today. As we gather together for worship, we are on the third Sunday in the season of Easter, and we hear again another Easter resurrection story where Jesus comes in the flesh to be with his disciples. A few announcements before we begin our worship today. I'll draw you to the back page of our bulletin to take a look there. Our 10th grade confirmands will share their faith statements with their family and faith mentors on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, uh, and at 7 p.m. and they will be in the fellowship hall, La, or La, fellowship, excuse me, the fellowship hall. Oh, they're going to be in the sanctuary, so we'll get that right. Uh, but next Sunday is Confirmation Sunday at our 10:15 worship service, so we rejoice with the 10th graders and their families on this important milestone in their journey of faith. Uh, You'll note on Thursday evening uh, from 7 to 8.30 is a Paint Your Heart Out event taking place in the Fellowship Hall. And you're invited to participate in that. Uh, their space is limited to 20 people, and I know at least so far we have uh, a little bit over, I think it's 10 or more, who have already signed up, so if you'd like to do so, please do that soon, so you uh, don't miss out. Also next Sunday uh, at 11.30 is our budget form, which will take place in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, the budget form is just a prelude so you can see what happened in the last year to our budget and what's being proposed for the coming year, because our annual meeting is coming up on May 2nd. We are continuing our Alleluia offering throughout the season of Easter. It's a special offering of giving thanks and praise for the good gift of the, and the promise of the resurrection through Jesus Christ. And so if you'd like to give that, just make a note on a check or, or, or in your giving that it's going toward the Alleluia offering. I believe that's all the announcements I will make at this time. And so I would invite you to please stand as we prepare for worship through our thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water, shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Amen. We join in our gathering hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. together in our prayer of the day. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
first reading is from Acts chapter 3, verses, <clears throat> excuse me, verses 12 through 19. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witness, witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance as, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm is Psalm 4. Please read responsively. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause, you set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love delusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble, Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who, is, who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, good morning again. I am so glad to be with you. For those who don't know me, well, my name is Martha, and I like to think of myself as an expert gardener, along with many other skills, of course. And I'm filling in for Molly during the Easter season because I love spring, and I love talking about resurrection. I don't know about you, but I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for warmer weather. I mean, it's technically spring, but it's hard to start my garden when I don't know when it's randomly going to snow in the middle of the week. Am I right? <laughs> the other day, I was thinking about last spring, you know, when the world shut down and we thought it'd only last a few weeks, perhaps a few months. Well, that was not the case. And we know that the pandemic really forced us to stay home and slow down and fill our time, some with new things. Well, I feel like I'm a glass half full kind of person, you know, trying to find the good in things. And the one thing I'm really quite grateful for during this time is I had so much time to spend in my garden. It was lovely. 
And I spent time nurturing my vegetables, singing to my flowers, feeding my bird neighbors. I had a huge harvest in the fall. This worked out great because I didn't have to go to the store and I was saving money. But I know it's hard, sometimes annoying, to see all the good in things. And one thing that I was really missing throughout this year was cooking meals for my friends. I really love cooking for my friends, especially with the vegetables for my garden. The time and the love that I spend growing the vegetables and picking them and preparing them and putting it all together in a meal, well, it's my gift for me to them. I value sitting around the table with my family and my friends, connecting with a meal without phones and TV, just sharing conversation and stories. You know, we are connected through meals. This reminds me of the meals that Jesus spent with his friends. Those meals were something special. I'm thinking specifically after he had risen three days later from his grave. There's a story of Jesus walking with two followers on their way back to their hometown. And they were talking about what had happened in Jerusalem, um, about what they had heard and seen with Jesus. And then Jesus all of a sudden started walking alongside them, but they did not recognize him at first. Because I don't think that they really believe that a man could rise from the dead. So when they got to their hometown, they said, hey, come on over for supper. And when Jesus blessed the food and broke the bread, the two guys finally realized it was actually Jesus, and he was alive again. And in today's gospel, which follows that story, the Bible tells us about when the risen Jesus shows himself to the disciples, telling them, peace be with you, look at my hands, I am alive. And the, the disciples, well, they were afraid. They thought that they saw a ghost. But Jesus asked them, do you have anything to eat? And he ate fish, and he showed them his hands and his feet, and he was not a ghost. He was alive with them again. And this was really grateful, really exciting, because he, this meant that he was the savior of the world, bringing peace and love to all people. You see, there's something special about eating with Jesus. The meals that he shared with others connected people to him and to one another, inviting them to see him and to believe in him. Even 2,000 years later, we continued to share the same meal that Jesus shared with his disciples. Did you know that? Bread and wine, which is communion. And every time we eat the blessed bread and wine, we are meeting Jesus, we are remembering Jesus, and remembering God's love for us. God connects us through this meal of communion, not only to Jesus, but to each other too. And it's not only us, United Lutheran Church, who is sharing this meal of communion. Christians all over the world continue to share this special meal of bread and wine. God connects us through meals, at home with our friends and our family, and meets us at church with bread and wine. And I think that's a really special thing to think about, that we're all connected. I just cannot wait to get back to sharing meals with my friends, cooking them my vegetables. I hope that you can remember these stories when you sit down at your table. Well, I better get going. Bye for now. And please stand for the gospel. According to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? 
Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. And please be seated. Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Yes, I know that Easter Sunday was two weeks ago, but in the church, the season of Easter continues with 50 days of rejoicing. Long after that last piece of Easter ham has been eaten and long after that pesky piece of Easter grass has been vacuumed up, well, the church is still celebrating celebrating the good news, the new life, the joy of Easter. But have you noticed that when we turn to the scriptures and read the accounts of the resurrection of Jesus, we don't find a whole lot of rejoicing and alleluias. Instead, when the disciples and the women come face to face with the risen Jesus, there's a whole lot of fear and doubt going on. I actually find this comforting rather than troubling. You see, I believe in the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus is my highest hope, my deepest peace, my reason for joy. And yet I confess that sometimes it is hard, hard for me to believe that Jesus is risen, is with us, and that there's reason for hope. And I take heart in knowing that it has been hard from the beginning. In our gospel for this third Sunday of Easter, Luke describes one of Jesus' post-resurrection appearances to his disciples. The disciples are sitting around talking. No doubt they're talking about the trauma of Jesus' death, the rumors that are now circulating about his missing body and about an, an encounter with him on the road to Emmaus. They're talking perhaps about all of that when Jesus appears in their midst out of seemingly nowhere. And they respond with terror as any of us might do if someone we knew who had died suddenly showed up in the living room. To allay their fears, Jesus offers his friends the tactile testimony of his body. Look at my hands and my feet, see, it is I myself, touch me and see. For a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones as you see that I have. When Jesus' feet and hands seem inadequate to convince the disciples of his physical presence with them, he asks them, do you have anything to eat? And the disciples hand him a piece of broiled fish. It's a simple act, but it shifts the story. Because as Jesus chews and swallows, something becomes possible that was impossible before. The disciples lose enough of their fear to actually draw close to Jesus and to listen to what he is telling them. I love this Bible story for the way that it grounds divine revelation in the concrete and the ordinary. It is in the presence of hands and feet and hunger and fish that the disciples come to faith. Indeed, all of the post-resurrection appearances in the Gospels center on the physical. The risen Jesus doesn't show up among them as some disembodied spirit or voice or 
lead them around in a pillar of smoke. No, he shows up in the flesh. And in this story, Luke goes to great lengths to emphasize that Jesus was not a ghost or a zombie or some sort of wish fulfillment on the part of the disciples. Jesus is really real and truly alive. His resurrected body is new. It can do things that our bodies cannot. But Jesus' presence with them in this world following the resurrection is his embodied presence, just as it has always been. This embodied Jesus is the Jesus we recognize from the whole witness of the Gospels. The story of Jesus is the story of how God took on human flesh and lived among us as one of us. The resurrected Jesus is the God who grew in a womb, who slept as a newborn in a feed trough, and who nursed at his mother's breast. Jesus is the embodied God who gets wet in the waters of the Jordan River, gets hungry for bread in the wilderness, weeps at his friend's grave, flings a whip around in the temple, finds comfort in the scented oils his friend places on his feet and hands, sweats blood in the Garden of Gethsemane, and suffers pain and finally dies by asphyxiation on a Roman cross. And it is this same embodied God in Jesus who now stands in front of his disciples, risen from the dead, but not leaving the flesh and blood of this life behind him. I believe in the resurrection of Jesus. And yet sometimes I think we preach and teach and understand the resurrection of Jesus in a much too limited way. We speak about the resurrection on Easter morning with joy, and we bring it up at funeral services. And when we do so, we do so as if the resurrection of Jesus were only about the hope of life eternal when we die. And if that were all, that would be an abundance. But the resurrection is more. The resurrected body of Jesus is the affirmation that God intends to do God's life-giving work, not by pulling us up and out of the flesh and blood struggles of this world, but by bringing new life, life from God, to our existence here and now. In the resurrection of Jesus is the pronouncement that our embodied lives in this world matter to God. It was important for the writer of Luke's Gospel to reaffirm that the risen Jesus was the embodied Jesus. You see, Luke was countering an argument that went something like this. Since the world and human flesh are evil and inferior, the goal is to rise above this world and to eventually escape this world for the realm of the spirit. And it followed that we can ignore the physical aspects of this world and focus our attention on spiritual matters. Therefore, physical hurts and the suffering of human beings, things like hunger and disease and slavery, they can be ignored by the church because Christians should be focused on spiritual concerns, on the condition of the soul. I read a story this week about a pastor who began his ministry in eastern Kentucky, in the mountains. And he said that when coal was first discovered and mined in the Appalachian Mountains, the coal magnates would set up little coal communities of row houses, and then at the end of each row of houses there would be a Protestant church, also built by the coal owners for the coal miners and their families. Sometimes. And then the, the coal owners would also provide a pastor for that church. Sometimes Baptists or Methodists, maybe Pentecostals or Presbyterians. But these preachers were given the instructions by the owners that they were to speak, they were to stick strictly to spiritual issues and not issues of economics or mind safety or unions. Those were issues the church shouldn't be involved in. 
Stick to saving souls, the owners would tell the preachers. And this way of thinking has continued for the church. Pastors and really the whole church should stay away from things like politics, economics, issues of war and peace, or matters like racial justice, LGBTQ, equality, immigration, and more. Luke wants to make it clear that the physical, earthly, flesh and blood world is real and valuable. Real and valuable enough for God to inhabit it in the person of Jesus of Nazareth and in the person of the risen Christ. To affirm the resurrection is to affirm that Jesus was not taken out of this world. The resurrected Jesus is right back in the world. I believe in the resurrection of Jesus. And I know from the articles I read and people I listen to that for many progressive Christians, it's become a popular trend not to need the resurrection. The criticism leveled at Christians is that we simply can't accept the harsher realities of this world and that we're simply in this faith business for the final reward. But I believe in the resurrection of Jesus because the whole witness of the scripture tells me that God is not willing to accept the suffering and injustice of this world. I believe that God is able and does act in ways that defy our control and understanding and things that we can't quite put in a box. I understand the resurrection of Jesus to be about justice. In Jesus, the kingdom of God is breaking into this world in a new and ultimate way. In this world, we see that far too many suffer unjustly. I listen to the woman who has just lost her spouse, and she watches other couples still enjoying a full life together, and she wonders, where is the justice in this? Too many of God's children are hungry. Too many of God's children are dying from gun violence while they simply go out shopping or to work. Too many of God's children have lost their lives to this global pandemic. Too many of God's children never get a real chance in this world. The resurrection of Jesus is the beginning of God's recreation of the world. It's a transformation through which all of God's sons and daughters will receive a share in the goodness of God. In the resurrection of Jesus, we see that suffering, injustice, and death will not be the final word over our lives or this world. God is in the business of righting wrongs and turning the world right side up. For me, the physical resurrection of Jesus is God's definitive offering of both compassion and justice. All that has been taken, broken, mistreated, wronged, and forgotten will be restored. So much of how this will unfold remains a mystery to us. As our reading from 1 John for this morning so eloquently puts it, Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know now is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. I believe in the resurrection of Jesus. I believe that the risen Jesus chooses also to be embodied in you and in me. In the gospel reading for today, Jesus sends his disciples to be witnesses. And with those first disciples, you and I are called to be witnesses also. And that's a big calling. So how do we begin? Where do we begin? Well, I think that Jesus in the gospel reading gives us two big clues. First, the risen Jesus comes and he stands among his friends in the midst of their doubts and fears. What does it look like for us to be a church that does the same? 
Maybe it means we make more room for one another's questions and doubts. Maybe it means we make sure we stand alongside one another in times of fear. Jesus doesn't shame his disciples for their doubts or try to cheer them up. He simply offers them his embodied self. Here are my hands, my feet. Secondly, Jesus shares food with his disciples in their joy and disbelief. I recently talked to someone who was unsure about how, how to help a young person in their life that they are deeply concerned about. And as we talked about everything that was out of their control, we also talked about what could be done. I can feed them, she said. I can do that. And we too can feed one another. In the face of unimaginable grief, we show up not with answers and positive thoughts, but with casserole and dessert. When we're not sure how to share God's good news and love with our neighbors, we provide summer lunches and pack backpacks and stand out in the snow and load packages of scalp potatoes into cars for the pandemic version of the love feast. So often the pain of this world is met and healed by our embodied presence. Hands that feed, feet that walk alongside, ears that listen, arms that hold hot dish and brownies to consume. We believe in the risen Jesus. Jesus who came among us as one of us and who refuses to become separate from us even in his resurrection. May we be Christ's embodied presence to one another and to the world, for this is our witness. Amen. Let us 
Spirit, Christ is with us here. Would the congregation please stand as we join in confessing our faith in the resurrected Lord. I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and of life everlasting. Amen. And as we join in our prayers of intercession, we begin with song and end with song. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, Lord, make us whole. Peace to all people, hope for each soul. God of grace in this place, hear now our prayer. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of the resurrected Jesus for all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. We are especially mindful of the drought conditions that exist throughout the western half of our nation. Bring much needed rain to our lands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to all. We pray for peace and justice in our legal system as we grapple with realities of racism. We pray for an end to gun violence and ask for your peace and comfort to the grieving families in Indianapolis and throughout our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness. Especially this day, we uplift before you Lisa Marks, Jerry Rowland, Twyla Stribal, Charlie Bateman, and Donna Schaefer, and all those who we name before you in our hearts. Be close to the hearts of the lonely, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer. Peace of the risen Christ be with you all. And also with you. We share a sign of peace with those around you. And the congregation may be seated. 
And as a reminder, our offering is being taken at our doorway. Welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heaven Our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered as one at the table of our Lord, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. thy Thy will be done, done. on earth as as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our our daily daily bread, bread, and forgive us our our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass trespass against against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us share in this meal together. So I invite you to take out your chalices. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And receive the blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Yeah. 